Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to War on the Sea, a new game out by Killerfish Games, uh, the developers behind Atlantic Fleet and Cold Waters. In today's episode, we're returning to our allied Let's Play. It is September of 1942, so we're like three months in to the war, uh, and uh, the war is not going very well. We haven't taken Guadalcanal from the Japanese. The Japanese have landed on Santa Cruz Islands. Uh, the Japanese have landed at Port Moresby and at Milne Bay. Moresby will probably fall this episode, I would imagine, or this stream. Uh, we're down to 300 soldiers there, but I don't really have the resources to pour in there to try and counter the Japanese. So I, I will likely allow it to fall and just pinch off any supplies that try and move there to strengthen them. Uh, meanwhile, uh, in terms of Milne Bay, we are winning there. We've got about 8,300 troops, and it looks like the Japanese probably have about 6,000 based off sort of this blue-red indicator of how the ground combat is going. So Milne Bay is going a bit better. Uh, Santa Cruz will fall as well. Maybe not today, but, but soon. And I don't really have a ton of reinforcements to bring to bear. We probably could bring about 2,500 more troops out of New Hebrides and shift them to Milne to try to win there quicker or try and just sort of delay the inevitable at Moresby or Santa Cruz. Uh, that would be, in theory, an option that we could, we could try and go with. Um, we also have plenty of supplies on New Hebrides, but not much else. Meanwhile, we do have a fair amount of command points, 156. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go ahead and buy an individual C3 cargo ship. Uh, and we're going to, whoops, that is not a C3, that is a Yorktown class carrier. So we're going to buy an individual C3 class cargo ship, and then we're going to go ahead and load it with cargo, and then we're going to ship that guy over to, over to Milne Bay, because they are running a little bit low on supplies. So let's go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, we've got a bunch of other cargo ships that are all over sort of moving around, so we're just going to kind of let things play out here for a little bit. It is 1,800 hours, which means I can't fly any new aircraft. I stopped being able to take them off at 1,700 hours, so we're just going to kind of go ahead and fast forward here. I can't do any real scouting patrols or anything like that. I do have a pretty strong surface task force with some light cruisers and destroyers and a heavy cruiser to the east of Milne Bay to prevent Japanese reinforcements from arriving there, uh, but we'll, we'll pause once we get to 5 a.m. And, and kind of rethink some of our uh some of our not rethink but get some of our patrol set up so it's now 1500 hour or 500 hours 5 a.m in the morning uh can this guy this guy does have cargo right yeah can i unload him or is he not close enough yet not close enough yet all right let's just uh get some patrol aircraft up so first things first let's go ahead and get some b-17s out of new hebrides they can do some long-range scouting so we'll fly them up to Rinelli and just kind of scout it out, scout out the area northwest of there. Meanwhile, we'll go ahead and get some uh, wildcats up at uh, Rinelli and just make sure the Japanese aren't about to land any troops on us from there. Meanwhile, at uh, Milne Bay, let's go ahead and scout out the area with some of our fighters as well. And then our, we do have one heavy cruiser here that has float planes, so let's get them up as well. All right. Uh, also, we can probably do some, some planes out of Port Moresby as well. To cover sort of the central area over there. I've been using the Atlantis. Uh, Tithus, so we have one task force here, Task Force 8, which has the Reno, the Oakland, and the... Well, the Reno and the Oakland are two Atlantas. We did have three Atlantas with her. We're sending one of them home, Flint, to try and open up some additional command points for another surface bombardment task force, which I want to send up to Guadalcanal. So we'll go ahead and speed things up at about time 600 for a second here. We're going to go ahead and pause now that the ship is close enough. And then we're going to go ahead and unload the cargo. So we now have 2,000 supply at Rennell Island again. So we'll go ahead and send this guy back to New Hebrides. Meanwhile, no indication of any recon seeing anything. So we'll keep things going at the 600 speed. In any event, um, let's... Uh, let's go ahead and attack the submarine or B-17 spotted doing exactly what they're supposed to do I 
Are you not a fan of uh, Hornfisher than uh, Newhauser? I, I personally am a big Hornfisher fan. I think from a readability perspective, I'm not sure there's there's a better descriptor of the Guadalcanal campaign than Neptune's uh, Inferno. All right, so let's go ahead. We've got this enemy sub on the surface. We're just going to go ahead and order all of our bombers to immediately converge on him and attack. Remember, we are carrying... Fifth, or we are carrying 2,000 pound bombs, and uh, those should absolutely nuke any Japanese submarine. It's hard to tell how far away we are. I feel like we're kind of close, but maybe not. We'll go ahead and unpause here. Let's take a look at. Oh, it's already diving. Fuck. Well, that was fast. It looks like this sub has taken some damage in the past, though. It's got like a pockmarked front of the sub. I'm curious if it'll stick it around periscope depth, because if he does, he's boned. But it does look like he's probably angling for a bit bit more of a dive, so we may not uh, we may not have a, a chance at this guy. Can't time compress, though. No, guys, I think he's going to get away. I think he's getting below the surface. I think he's diving deep enough to avoid these bombs. Also, apparently there's his scouting plane. So maybe we can fly our B-17s close enough to that to shoot down his scouting plane? There's the 17s going in low, by the way. The I-400 in the game dive, dive way too fast? Eh. I've never seen, this is only the second time I've ever seen a Japanese submarine get below periscope depth on me when I've had a bombing run, so I think more often than not the B-17s probably close on them way too fast. But hey, that's just me. But B-17s are like the killer ASW platform. I've never really attacked them with, with Avengers though. Maybe Avengers are a good, good weapon against them. Someone was telling me that Avengers with rockets are, are like death. You know, they, they make mincemeat of, uh, of subs. I don't think the I-400 is in the game. They've got the uh, B-1 and B-2 classes, which I'm not quite as familiar with Japanese submarine classes. I'm more familiar with, like, the I-whatevers and then the, the ROs. I'm not sure what the B-1 or B-2 would cla be classified as. You can see the first two groups are dropping. Those bombs are dropping. I'm sure they won't do any damage, but they they are dropping. You can see they're dropping in pattern. Our four our four two thousand pounders are going down now as well. I also just found something out today. Uh, thank you mostly to Wolfpack uh, that the um, in game the B-17 is supposed to have two different ranges, so you can carry either four thousand pounders or four two thousand pounders in the game, and. Um, the game is supposed to give the B-17 different ranges based on the payload. It does not yet have that option, but presumably at some point it's going to be patched in, or if you go with a thousand pounder payload, then you will have a longer range for the B-17, which could be pretty cool if you can fly like all the way up to Rabaul or something. Alright, so it doesn't look like we did any damage to that sub with those bombs, but it won't let me leave quite yet, so does say heavy and critical, but I'm pretty sure that's a sub I had already damaged heavily and critically previously, although I could be wrong. Um, are the Avengers out of fuel yet? They are. They also have torpedoes, so that's not great. All right, so can I go ahead and pull new air? Avengers. We'll go with the rockets. We'll see if we can get those, get those subs with rockets. Maybe we can jump it before it's able to surface again or submerge. All right, let's go ahead and attack this guy. We spotted him again. Perhaps we'll regret not having depth charges here. Where are you, sub? I don't see it yet. Usually it comes up right on screen for you. Are we not going to see it? This is the one other time I've had a, had a sub try to detect a sub. And I've, they always show up right away if you've got B-17s. Look at those pretty little rockets right under, under the wingtips there. I wonder if it, like, started the, the battle below the surface. All right, let's 
Let's try and... We don't have much fuel left either. So let's get the B-17s... Oh, I can't yet. All right. Let's get the B-17s back out there. Maybe we can detect it again. Meanwhile, this guy's coming back in. I'm going to go ahead and dispatch the Chimeron. Let it go, because we don't. We need more fuel for it to be able to transport anything. Okay. Yeah, pause. All right, we'll go ahead and release this cargo ship or this this um, oiler so we'll have 161 points I do want to build a new task force here to kind of keep Guadalcanal beat down a bit it's it's at a two and a two which isn't too bad uh -huh. two and two isn't too bad um, meanwhile Milne Bay probably should try and get more troops there well, we could try and reinforce Santa Cruz Island just to hold it some, but eh, I don't know All right, these guys back it or almost. Um, all right, so that guy's going to Milne. How's Milne's supply? Not great. We got two thousand on the way. Flint's on the way back. Task Force Eight's on the way back. All right. Go find me some subs, B seventeens. That's your goddamn job. Well, the enemy sub's up there. Can you get it? Is that close enough? 180 nautical miles? Yeah, that's easily within range. All right. Meanwhile, uh, WTF Captain and Dude with Two Shoes. Thank you for the follows. Appreciate it. All right, B-17s, head on in. You can't tell me he's still below the surface. Where the hell is the guy? Tithus, thank you for the follow. Why are you letting me spot him and just having him be submerged? There's no... I want to destroy him. He's under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. All right, so still no enemy sub. I mean, he's around here somewhere because we've got a countdown timer, which to me leads me to believe he might actually be on the surface. Why would it give me that countdown if he's not? So let's actually just hang in here a little bit longer. Will it require I wait again if I... No. Well, now there's no t countdown. By the way, the land explosions when you bombard an enemy ship that's run aground look pretty cool, actually. They've got a nice little shockwave effect. I really hope they add, like, strategic bombing of airfields or things like that to the game. Might throw the balance off a bit if you give the U.S. the option to do that with B-17s, but... It's what the fuck, Captain? What the fuck, Capt? Okay. Alright, so still no detection of this guy. It's almost nighttime. It actually is nighttime. Can't take more aircraft off. Alright, so let's go ahead and pause... Get this guy down here. Alright, so this ship is going to go ahead and load more cargo. And then we are going to send it to Milne, just to make sure we've got kind of two ships, in case a sub sinks one of these guys, since I am sending them up unescorted. Also, you can't have too much cargo when in a land battle, I think, so... And then I'm also going to... Uh, I'm tempted to send troops on this cargo ship, but on the flip side, like, do I really want to risk them getting sunk? I've already lost how many marines at sea? Still, I'm hoping if we send them far enough south, they'll be safe. It's going to take like three days for them to get there. Am I going to play War Thunder? Uh, not tonight. I've never really played War Thunder on this channel. I've always been more of a of like a strategy game individual. Just full transparency. Now I have I have played a little bit of IL2 on my YouTube channel. That could be something I'd consider doing on stream. Probably not War Thunder. I'm not I don't know. 
Would I guess I'd never say never, but Okay, so let's get this thing going here. I guess it's daylight again. Let's send up some... Nope, not daylight quite yet. I want to fight me some battles. All right, so new day. So go ahead and get some of these fighters out here. I really would like the ability to have, like, small bombs on my fighters. It would be historically accurate. Uh, new Orleans. Launch aircraft. Kingfishers, Go. And then Moresby. Also, I really wish this game would have, like, an ability to set up just reoccurring uh, air patrols and stuff like that. That would be highly useful. Okay. Enemy ships. All right, Avengers. Use your damn rockets. Hopefully we spotted them on the surface this time. Are they really going to be below this? Oh, no. Here we go. Got them. Okay, boys. Go and attack this enemy sub. Give me some rocket attacks here. Is this guy on the surface? Yes, he is. All right. Hopefully they can get there. Very first stream you've ever watched. No pressure. All right. I'll, I'll endeavor to, to not suck. I do love those sunsets or sunrises, though. The purple sky. Oh, you guys are doing circles? You're totally going to eat up too much time. They're going to get below the surface before you even get over there. Just dive and... Drive and dive. Come on. Yeah, OWK. Oak. OWK. Oak. The oak tree, the, the game definitely needs a, a better a better method for air search. It needs, like, you should, you, what you really need is something like you have in War in the Pacific, where you can set up, like, patrol arcs. Oak tree? Yeah. I realized that after I said it. All right, where are the aircraft coming in from now? I can't even see. Can't see them yet. There's the sub. We'll see if he gets if he dives in time. It's a pretty beastly sub there. I'd say they should fly faster, but I'm worried about accuracy. He's still above the surface. He's getting a little bit lower in the water. Japanese boats were slow divers, though. These guys are moving at 190 knots, which is basically how fast the um, the B-17s are moving. So. He may get below the surface here in just a second. He's getting real low. I think he's about to slip beneath. Oh, he's shooting some flak, though. Come on, nose over and fire. Nose over and fire. There you go. Oh, God. That sub just got rocked. She's going under for sure. Just got obliterated by those rockets. I can't imagine. Look at the side of that thing. All torn up all along the hull. Good game, sub. Yep, she's a goner. I'll take it. We could wait for... I don't even know if she's going to head down to... Is she going to head down to Crush Death? Looks like... Uh, I mean, she's already sunk. There you go. Crush depth. Boom. Dead. Victory for our subs, or for our for our Avengers there. First time I've sunk an enemy sub with an Avenger. That is the 27th enemy submarine that we, or no, not 17th enemy submarine we've sunk. They have a total of 26 that they can, uh, they can bring into, into the game. All right, those guys are heading in. So another enemy sub sunk. Let's go ahead and get some B-17. Nope, can't launch for one-tenth of an hour. All right, you guys should really RTB. I guess you might as well fly out there just to see what you can detect. Give me a new B-17, and then I want you to fly west. 
ahead of these merchant ships just to see if you can't uh, detect anything. No enemy ships detected by my scout planes out in the Solomon Sea. Nothing sort of in the Guadalcanal region. Airfield's still a two. I'm imagining they're probably sending some resupply convoys somewhere. They should have at least 60 subs, Dev American Bias. I think they had 26 that would have been accessible to them at this time in the campaign. All right, so we get to fight another air battle, which is mostly just watch planes fly around in circles. Oh, shit. Head north, boys. What do we got here? Enemy ships. What are they? Destroyer here. Heavy cruiser. Heavy cruiser. So two destroyers and two heavy cruisers in the slot. Or, I guess, just east of Savo Island. Thanks for the follow. Tail McGrand Master. Alright, so I'm going to try and strafe these destroyers, I guess. As long as there's no Japanese zeros around, which I don't really see. Let's go after the DDs. There's a chance we might sink them. Bank and attack, boys. Three fourths of the Gatos weren't even being done, being done being built at the time of the campaign. Yeah, isn't that true about the the Fletchers as well? Like a lot of the Fletchers shouldn't be accessible, but it seems like the entire list of Fletchers is available to the player in the campaign. Whatever. All right, so they're going to come in here, broadside on. They're going to get hit by a fair amount of flak, but we've got a pretty good uh, grouping of aircraft here. I like how this group of two just sort of like dropped into formation. They're like, we're here too, guys. They're coming, well, they're flying into the sun. That's maybe not the best strategy. I mean, cruisers are firing flak out at them. You can see the cluster of aircraft coming in here. That's a lot of 50 cal. No explosions, really? couple of flaming aircraft. Nobody's shot down yet. Can we form everybody up in one task force? We can. And just order them all to go back in and attack. Set them to 60 feet. Slow down, boys. Gonna keep going after him. Warm up. Attack. This is probably, I probably should be microing, microing this a bit more. But we're just gonna keep circling around and, and attacking here. Japanese flak doesn't seem to be hurting too bad. We haven't lost anyone yet. We're not we're gonna have really long strafing attacks though based off of... Still no fires or explosions, huh? Let's get out of here a little bit. I'm going to fly these guys via waypoint out to here. We still haven't lost an aircraft, huh? I don't know why I'm flying parallel to the front of their formation. This is just asking for someone to die but not a lot of heavy flak coming off these cruisers. They seem pretty light. 
You think it's a little dumb how 50s work in the game and one wildcat strafe my Musashi caused like six fires? Ha! <laughs> Sorry, Jack Hood. Oh shit, what happened? Did the stream just drop? Alright. I should be back now. That was that was fucked. Can you guys Are you guys here? Can you still see me here? Alright, that was weird. No idea why that stream dropped. Just out of nowhere, too. Tank stuck, thanks for the follow. Didn't lose power or anything. Not sure why that happened. Alright, come in low, boys. 60 feet. Maybe we'll collide into this, uh, this cruiser if we get low enough, although it doesn't look like we will. So that was weird. Alright, so we're coming in to try and swarm this rear destroyer here. We're taking some flak as we fly over those cruisers. Oh, the the Allies definitely sank enemy warships with with 50 cal's. They sank they sank destroyers with 50, primarily with 50 cal's, I believe. Definitely sank merchant ships. So that was certainly a thing, although probably not the Musashi. <laughs> kind of bummed that we're not getting any explosions here. We've lost one wildcat now, by the way. My strategy is largely to just keep just keep hitting them. Until all of my aircraft are either out of ammo or dead. But it doesn't seem to be doing much damage. It does maybe has a slight list. But I'm not sure why that destroyer is sailing away from his formation. He's losing a lot of the benefit of his flak. Joe Bobby 007, thank you very much for the follow. Yeah, the P-40s were credited with destroying a destroyer. That was the uh, the Tuskegee Airmen's group, wasn't it? There's some dispute on whether it sank or was heavily damaged, I believe. Some of the post-war records... There we go. Explosion there. Some of the post-war records, I think, may... I've read anyway, indicate it may have been badly damaged or sunk, or maybe there was a misidentification of which ship was actually sunk or damaged. But yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure we sank some Japanese destroyers with 50s as well. They definitely sank merchant ships. Okay. But it was also a little bit difficult because a lot of times fighters would carry like 100 pound bombs or something light. So it's kind of like, what did the damage? There's still 190 people here at WTF. Twitch is very slow. When you do streams like that, if they fall and come back, it takes a little while for the viewers to be like credited as back watching the stream. But I'm sure we've still got 94 people here. What the fuck, Cap? Hey, we sank the enemy destroyer. Number four is sinking, boys. Sender. Sank one of the Japanese destroyers here with our wildcats. All right, let's go after the, the rear Japanese destroyer here with what we've got left. We don't have a ton of ammo left, so I'm not sure we'll be able to strafe much more. But we did get a Japanese destroyer here. 50 cal go burr indeed. All right. Hey, the Japanese Zeros arrived. <laughs> a little bit late, you guys. A little bit late to the party here. Good thing my fighters are going to have no ammo left. They're going to get shot down like like it's no, nobody's business. Hey, Stream Elements, thanks for that, that FYI. Yeah, I should get the B-17s. I'm not sure if they can get here based on... We'll have to see what their endurance is. But we did sink a Japanese destroyer. I would imagine like what would happen here is the 50 cals probably hit an enemy torpedo and detonated the torpedo, and that's really what sank it, like through a secondary explosion or something like that. But let's... um. Can we engage these enemy fighters here? You're being chased. You're being chased, sir. Most of my guys have basically no ammo left, so we should probably try and get out of the fight. 
Realm 14, thank you for the follow. <laughs> in a matter of months, in in a matter of a month in game, you did better than the whole Allied force in the Pacific between Pearl Harbor and the end of 43. Um, certainly not in merchant ship tonnage sunk. The Allies, I think they sank like a hundred thousand tons of Japanese merchants in the Guadalcanal campaign. But um, yeah, certainly maybe on warships. It didn't vanish again. WTF? Did it? I still see it. Or are you making a joke about being canceled? Oh, Japanese sunk, Joe Bobby. Yeah, definitely. We are doing way better than history. Hey, Detective Cole. Brass wind chimes, good to see you. Please call you Capt. Okay. Sorry, Capt. Or Captain. It dropped a... Is it really dropping? I mean, I'm not showing any drop frames on my screen here. And I still am... I can see it in my other monitor here. Well, thanks, Realm. Alright, cool. Well, let's try and get out of this fight here, because we don't have any ammo left to fight. So it says it'll let me quit in 30 seconds, so hopefully we'll have a couple of wildcats that are left alive that we can RTB with. That's weird, you guys, because I'm not dropping frames, and I've got it running on a second monitor, and it all looks fine for me. So I don't know if maybe the issue's on, on, on your end, or could it be like a an encoding thing, depending on what resolution you're watching in. I'm not sure, but it, it does appear to be working. I don't know if Helldivers are in the, even in the game, indeed. Or in in need. I need. I need them. I don't know. I'm really bad with Twitch names, if you guys haven't been able to tell. By the way, we sank a Japanese submarine with our fighters. We did lose eight aircraft, but definitely worth a Japanese submarine. Or, or destroyer, sorry. Their subs have more displacement than that destroyer we sank. Lol. All right, so that's four more command points and another Japanese sub sunk. Task Force Ace rema Eight remains off Milne Bay, uh, and uh, these B-17s have 542 nautical miles left of range. It doesn't get me there. Gets me close. And we can try and fly there, and maybe we'll get pulled into the battle. Maybe they'll head south or something. Oh shit! I got Wildcats off of uh, New Britain. I guess we got to begin that fight. We had four wildcats being intercepted to the west of Rabaul, near New Britain, deep in the heart of the Solomon Sea. Com F. You don't like Com Fitib? Com Fitib? Fitbid? Fitbid? <laughs> uh. All right, let's leave. I don't want to engage Japanese zeros out that way. All right, RTB, you guys are almost out of fuel anyway. B-17's on the way up toward Guadalcanal. Maybe they can engage Japanese. I guess we'll begin this. They're going to get attacked by enemy zeros, but maybe there will be enemy shipping in the area that we'll spot. Those cruisers or something. Let's uh, let's have them fly up north here, where we saw the cruisers last, and maybe we can we can find the enemy uh, task force here. Won't let me time compress, which means there are probably some Japanese fighters around here. The game, to my knowledge, doesn't have any units that aren't available at the start of the game become available for you later in the game, with the exception of, I think, the uh, one of the cruiser classes for the Americans. Is it the Wichita class? Oh, shit. Enemy fighters. Coming in here. Four enemy zeros off on the... On, at a, uh, what is that? One o'clock? One o'clock? Two o'clock? Three o'clock?
One of the Zeros is going down. They're attacking the lead formation, by the way. One of the B-17s appears to be smoking. And she's going down now, but we got a second Zero. So one 17 and two Zeros so far. Another B-17 going down. There's another one smoking over there. Oh. Is that the fourth enemy zero that's attack trying to attack us? Wichita's available from the start? Maybe it's not the Wichita then. One of the, the most modern heavy cruiser classes says it's not available till 43. Bulldozer. Don't touch your math. What? Oh, the Baltimore. That's what you're talking about. Yep. All right, Japanese Zero is being damaged in any event. Another 17. There's there's a somewhat of an interesting experience watching this air battle from a distance, from a formation of an on-looking B-17 group. Nice tanks. Yeah, I, uh, I actually went to Hunter Safety... A lot of places don't put it on anymore, I feel like, but uh, I went to Hunter Safety at, like, our local village hall or whatever. Uh, I remember going with my dad. I've never actually hunted, but he thought it was very important that I... Uh, he, w he was a veteran, and he thought it was very important that I understand proper... It was really more for firearm safety than anything, um, which I think is the case for a lot of people. Um, but in any event, um, went to uh, our local village, village hall or basement of the library, if you will. Um, just west of Milwaukee is where we where I grew up. Yep, you're right. It's half the course. The other half is is like actually hunting stuff. All right, so yeah, so they got that one. We got one of the two remaining zeros. So there's just one left coming in on three B-17s. Now, if you were to tell me five B-17s shot down in exchange for four Zeros, I think the trade is very clearly in the in the favor of the Zeros, but, you know, we've got a lot of B-17 crews, as the war in Europe will, will demonstrate, so I think we're fine if, uh, if we lose even six or seven in B-17s for four Zeros. Of course, the game doesn't really model that either, so it doesn't model attrition on pilot quality or other things. It probably sh it, it would be cool if it did, because the South Pacific campaign was an absolute graveyard of Japanese planes and, and pilots, if you will. Uh, a lot of the Japanese, the losses that the Japanese couldn't recover from were from the Guadalcanal and South, you know, the Solomon Islands campaign, much more so than the Battle of Midway. They pulled off their experienced crews out of their carriers, which didn't really, you know, exist a whole lot, and they threw them into the campaign at the end of it because the Japanese Army Air Force was getting shredded so badly, and uh, and they lost a lot of their best pilots in that in that campaign, flying out of you know land bases rather than uh, than carriers. Come on, there you go. All right, we got them. All right, still no sign of the enemy shipping, so we'll uh, we'll hang in there for just a minute more, see if we can pick them up. I don't know if they're on this map or not. They may not have spawned into this battle. <laughs> Flying it preposterous that a zero flies into B-17s and pinpoint accuracy and doesn't get touched. Hey, we shot them all down. These are B-17Fs, yes. Yeah, most of the pilots, uh, the Japanese pilots at Midway, I believe, were actually picked up after the fact. That that myth of Midway breaking their naval air force is a bit, bit of a myth. Certainly destroyed their carriers, no doubt. But the, the pilots were... You know what would have been interesting is if after Midway, if the Japanese had said, like, listen, we don't have carriers for these guys, so why don't we use this as an opportunity to have them train a bunch of new pilots and use those those that cadre of, uh, that rather large surviving cadre of pilots in, in training. Yeah, that was the other thing. Don't fly 800 miles to your target just because your plane has that kind of range doesn't mean that's the best thing to be doing. That's true, Oak, but they also only had, what, two carriers deployed there? Alright, doesn't seem like we're going to spot anything, so we'll go ahead and withdraw. 
7B17 shot down for the loss of four zeros. We've got 17 nautical miles left of range. All right, so we couldn't... Oh, we're going to get bounced by zeros again on the way back? Fuck. This is the second group of 12 B-17s that I sent up to Guadalcanal, then, and they won't make it back. Can I retreat? It'll only take 36 seconds. Big war in the Pacific brain experience speaking here, THG. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little. Okay, I guess I didn't realize they had three fleet, three fleet carriers there. Can I get out of here yet? <laughs> all right, let's uh. Let's get out of here before they shoot us all down. They're focusing on that one lone B-17. Something tells me if it was five left, they'd form up in one formation. All right, and with that being said, guys, this is as good a point as any to go ahead and wrap this episode of War on the Sea up. Uh, we got a nice little rocket attack on a Japanese submarine. I think that's the first successful rocket attack we've seen so far. Um, but, uh, but yeah, not a super eventful turn, but there were some things that happened, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. As always, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching. This was taken from a Twitch live stream on my Twitch channel. There's a link in the description to that channel. And until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'm out.